everyone, and welcome to the KBB From the Tap podcast. I'm Executive Editor Chelsea Butler, and today I am joined by Laurence Carr, whose eponymous design firm blends beauty, function, and sustainability in its projects. Be sure to subscribe to KBB's YouTube channel and click the like button on our videos. You can also subscribe to KBB's From the Tap podcast on such apps as Apple, Spotify, Pandora, and Google Podcasts, and please feel free to leave a review. Welcome, Laurence, and thank you for joining me. Hello, Chelsea. Great to be here. Yeah, it's good to see you again. Good to be here. So today we're going to talk about circular design in the kitchen and bath, but why don't you start out by telling us a little bit about yourself and your firm? So I'm Laurence Carr, interior designer and product designer and based in New York City. And what do we do with Laurence Carr Inc., which is my company, a design studio? Um, it's actually sort of a multifaceted design firm that specializes in residential and commercial interiors, as well as collaborations uh, with different international brands or trade organizations for some uh, events and activations that we organize on the theme of the circular economy. Uh, because as an expert in circular design and advocate for advancing sustainable and healthy materials in the build environment and furnishing industry, I specialize in projects that are really around the theme of sustainability, circularity, and wellness themes. So that's what we do. Um, I'm based in New York, but I have projects, you know, in the U.S. and uh, also recently in uh, Europe and Paris, for instance. I was just having an activation on circularity in Paris, Mesoge. Right. So what's your definition of the circularity uh, theme uh, when it comes to your firm and your you know, projects and things like that? How do you see that? How can you define it? Yeah, so, you know, I, I'll just start with the definition of a circular economy, which in general is a solutions-based economic model that aims to really eliminate waste and pollution by changing three things. How we manage our existing resources, how we make and use products and materials, and what we do with them at the end use of our life cycles. So in a circular model, materials and products have uh, closed loop life cycles as they are reused, recycled, upcycled, and transformed into new products and material. So in design, circularity describes a system where waste is designed out, the value of materials is preserved at the highest level possible, and natural systems are regenerated. So for instance, you know, circular products are often made from reclaimed materials, renewables or synthetic biomaterials created from other wastes. They often take into account the natural energy used to produce and ship them and carefully measures are taken to reduce waste here as well. And the local economies and peoples are considered as well as labor equality and fair trade issues. And finally, retailers, I'd say, might offer, you know, sometimes take back programs to reduce landfill waste when customers are down with their items. So that's, that's just really an example of how they break the used items down for component parts to be reused again. All these practices that I just described, you know, influence the circularity of any production effort. All right, so now I want to pivot over to how you became interested in this concept and why it's important to you, which some of that is obvious, but let's get into it. No, of course, of course. Well, I'll, I've always, you know, had a huge heart for environmental and personal wellness. I, I grew up in Europe and we often talk, I lived in Germany, you know, I was born in France, I lived in Germany, in the UK. And in Europe, we often talk about, um, you know, definitely ecological you know, uh, goals and how can we preserve the planet. So I just really grew up with this uh, exposure, you know, of information from a very 
very early age. Uh, in Germany, we are always very health oriented. Um, so this developed as a personal passion of mine um, for as long as I can remember. Um, you know, I also had, um, I guess, you know, I was um, studying for um, uh, ballet, dance, performing arts, opera, music. And so I had such a discipline that I, I had as I was growing up and going to school, had to be extremely disciplined and always extremely healthy to perform uh, very well on stage. Um, so all of that, I guess, comes, you know, from, from as long as I can remember. But then I, the further I dived into my education as an interior designer later, the more I learned about the dramatic negative impacts um, that the build environment um, has on the earth. So, for example, the build environments, you know, we know generates nearly 50% um, of annual global uh, CO2 emissions. So that's how we know, and I knew, we must do better. So I really focused on that topic. And I think we really must, as an industry-wide standard, take responsibility for our impact and try everything we can to increase the positive and work to snuff out the negative. That's how I learned into, you know, I really leaned into, uh, you know, into sustainable, renewable, and circular design in particular. And that's why I'm such a passionate advocate now. All right, so how do you use this concept in your kitchen and bath projects? We'd love for you to share some examples. Yeah, Green Home Sky Inc. project features sustainable and circular solutions. So we we now know that it's not just better for the earth, but you know these elements improve human wellness as well as thanks to their innovation and efficiency and elegance they, that can really um, uh, help towards um, more sustainability and circularity in your homes, um, for instance, if we talk about residential projects. So, for example, in bathrooms, uh, we always um, propose radiant heated floor, you know, or hydronic radiant heating because it is more energy efficient than forced air. It keeps the air cleaner and we can create a more comfortable and quiet environment. Um, there are also amazing innovations in uh, biomaterials that are producing really high quality alternatives for countertop, tile and flooring that are much more sustainable than more common raw materials. So if, uh, you know, for example, we take the South, South Stone's uh, Sunlight Days, um, which is manufactured using 99% of reused water, 100% renewable electric energy, and a minimum of 20% recycled raw materials in its composition. So it makes it a fully carbon neutral collection. In kitchen, uh, we often, you know, uh, uh, definitely, definitely always, you know, push with smart tech. Um, the ability to control our appliances, um, you know, HVAC, lighting, window treatments, and more by applications on our mobile device is a real game changer, as, as, as we know now. We can use this technology to set routines that control what is used, when, which makes a dramatic difference in energy efficiency and personal convenience, as well as lean when things are, aren't functioning correctly and solve problems remotely. So for today's appliances, you know, that are designed with energy and functional optimization, you know, all these benefits, um, the overall sustainable and anyone's home or worker space. I would say that, um, you know, there are brands who are on a long-term journey towards a circular economy as reliable partners for environmentally conscious design and construction. You know, we know Constantino, Color, Grohe, Gen Air, um, Electrolux has also developed a lot, a lot. I mean, I think there's uh, so many brands, kitchen and bath uh, brands that are coming out with sustainable commitments. And, and um, you know, we see an increasing number who are talking about and adopting the circular economy practices. So the, the brands you mentioned, and, you know, I'm sure there are tons more out there who are, who are doing this, hopefully. Um, you know, the fact that they are created in a sustainable way using recycled materials and that kind of thing definitely doesn't take away from the aesthetics or function or uh, productivity of the product, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, this is, you know, what I actually talk about really um, all the time is that, you know, elegance 
uh, is not taken away because you go towards sustainable or circular practices, uh, you know, actually quite the contrary. You can really, uh, you know, blend luxury, elegance, um, comfort, um, sustainability, circular practices. Um, they, they, they work 100% together. Okay, great. So are your clients open to this? Or do you only take on clients who are interested in this? I'm sure you kind of have to explain what it is because not everybody knows, but just kind of curious um, how you go about that discussion with them. Well, you know, I mean, due to my focus on those areas, I mean, most of the clientele that I, the clientele that I attract uh, are interested in circularity and sustainability. I mean, it's, it's really clear on my website, on our blogs, uh, you know, the press articles we get. I, uh, it's there, but it's not a prerequisite for working with me and my team. However, I do find that clients always leave their you know, Laurence Carr Inc. experience much more aware and passionate about their environmental impact. In part, I think it's because of our emphasis on that during the research process, as well as the design phase. Um, I am never shy about educating my clients on why we choose healthy materials over others um, or work with brands that are sustainable and, cir and have circular processes. Um, we always design with sustainability and circularity in mind, as I always say, regardless of a client. And, and they learn as we go about why it's important. And I have to say that, um, you know, they always uh, get on board and, and, and are very passionate about it. That's great. Yeah, that's good to hear. So I know that designing a more circular future is trademarked on your website. Can you go into a little more detail on what that is? Well, it's, a, it's an expression of a mission that guides all my work and, and uh, you know, the Laurence Carr Inc. brand and, and team. Um, design can either contribute to a more linear future with more take and make and toss approaches that contribute to global warming and landfill overflow. We've seen this over and over everywhere, different countries, you know, uh, different continents, or it can contribute to circular models. And we do our best to mitigate the damage done to the Earth's environment um, by the build environment. And I really choose the latter. And, um, and that is why it's there. It's just everything we do from the beginning to the end, we have this concept and that approach. And we pass on the message. All right, so tell us about your Shea Laurence Earth X TV series and how it relates to the concept of circular design. <laughs> yes, 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 I was about to mention it. So it's, it's, it's a good, good uh, question. So, so Shea Laurence is an original series um, that has two seasons um, and you can watch it uh, on Spectrum in the US. Um, this is a docu-series that specifically speaks to industry professional by highlighting what's possible and the myriad benefits of really adopting circularity in business, but also to consumers by showcasing high fidelity circular, high fidelity circular companies and organizations and products and manufacturers and helping inspire shoppers to really support circular brands and circular design. Um, as, as I've said, you know, the circular economy holds promises for um, achieving several of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, including energy, economic growth, sustainable cities, sustainable consumption and production, climate change, oceans, and life on land. Now, once we are aware of this, I mean, we really realize the importance of, of these practices. Over 70% of a product's life cycle costs and environment footprint are determined during its design phase. So really, we realize that by planning for a more circular future, we can reduce carbon emissions, restore nature's biodiversity, and make a tremendous positive impact on climate change. So what makes it, uh, you know, that series really washable is by having candid conversations with manufacturers and designer. I really uh, try to showcase the most innovative moves towards circularity and how it stimulates the viewer's 
imagination. So again, I mean, it's like, it's a peek into the future of design, like a special backstage pass into how we can, you know, be part of a solution. That's really a message that I, I, I really want to pass on through this series. And that the intimate knowledge of what's possible and how we can make it viable is part of the magic of Chez Laurence and its popularity. That's that's really what I believe. But again, I mean, it all starts with the awareness and education um, of the consumer. And that's how we provoke the adoption of these methods and inspire people, consumer and companies to take action. That's what Chez Laurence is all about. And, and I should say that, uh, yes, I'm the creator, executive producer, and host of this uh, docu-series on FX TV. So definitely Chez Laurence is part of, my, part of the answer to my next question, but you know, behavior is hard to change. So what do you feel it will take to have a shift in consumer and industry behavior toward living more sustainably? Um, I, I, I really think that um, awareness is key. Um, most people don't even realize the impact of their environment, their interiors, and uh, you know their furnishings, uh, their rugs, uh, um, even their clothes. You know, so continuing to educate and shine the light on, you know, the impacts of uh, you know circularity is crucial and adopting circular um, economy practices and, and really, you know, buying from these manufacturers and brands that are that are working on it. I, I, I really think that 2023 is really a milestone stone year for circularity. Um, I see, you know, everywhere. And I think we saw this at, you know, NKBA, uh, KBIS, you know, in um, uh, um, last month, um, we, we see this um, in Europe, you know, Salon de Mobile, Maison Objet, everybody talks about circularity, Stockholm Design Week, all these Scandinavian are all there as well. And, and uh, we speak about this more and more in the US, you know, we see it um, in every trade show. I think there's a real conversation about sustainability and uh, circularity. So I think more and more brands are, are really ready to to adopt circular practices and make concrete goals for waste reduction and more consumers are beginning to demand more circularity and transparency from the businesses with whom they work. Um, I, I really see, you know, the millennials and definitely the Gen Z will not buy anything else but that. I think there's a change of behavior from the baby boomers. Um, they're highly influenced by their uh, millennials or uh, Gen Z, you know, younger uh, families. And, um, and I think I see, you know, um, in, in new products um, being bought by the, you know, being brought to the market, furniture and textile buyback, recycled uh, plants being rolled out, uh, new materials being developed in labs, and, um, and new buildings, you know, and even cities being imagined for a more circular future. We see all these carbon emissions, uh, you know, reduction, uh, urban living plans. I mean, it just, it's just the conversation is everywhere. Um, so my hope is really that um, circularity uh, becomes a main selling point, both within the built environment industry, the kitchen and bath, the furnishings and textile across all over too. Yeah, so you mentioned seeing this at Cavis. I, I think sustainability was an overarching theme, movement, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I, I really do feel like, you know, I saw it in, uh, you know, plumbing fixtures, appliances, not just, uh, you know, sustainable products themselves, but the way they're created, you know, all that good stuff. Um, and I, I just feel like if, if there are brands out there who are not leaning that way and not putting an emphasis on that, then they're really missing the boat these days. Right. Absolutely. I think, uh, I think it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a win-win. It's just, uh, uh, understanding what consumers, uh, want, you know, how now they care about the environment. It's not something we can, uh, ignore, but also it's an economic uh, win, you know, um, uh, uh, consumers won't invest you know, unless it has a mission or, you know, a commitment to sustainability. I think it's, it, it goes both together. 
it's no more one or the other. It's um, that's why I think it's a win-win both economically, but also in terms of branding and and making your your brand really sell well. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. I really do appreciate you coming on to talk to us more about this concept. I, I needed to learn more about it myself. I know about sustainability, but didn't didn't really fully understand what circular design meant. So I appreciate that. And hopefully all of our, our viewers and listeners will, will definitely get something out of this as well. Thank you so much for having me. It's been great.